Thank you, Stan. I love being an engineer. And I love being an engineer in Silicon Valley in particular because as Paul was talking about, here in Silicon Valley, uh, risk sharing, risk taking uh, is encouraged, which is a, a really a wonderful thing. I have co-founded three companies here in, in Silicon Valley, and honestly, I gotta tell you, uh, none of them have gone according to plan. <laughs> At least not according to the initial plan. Now, I know there's a lot of people here this evening that uh, are thinking of starting companies. A lot, of, a lot of college students here thinking of starting companies here in Silicon Valley. And I think that's a fantastic thing. So I'd like to devote my few minutes up here this evening to passing on a few lessons learned, uh, a few observations of the trials and tribulations of what it's like to be on the inside of a typical Silicon Valley startup company. And I'd like to use my second company, SnapTrack, as a case in point. Now, SnapTrack, which Stan just mentioned, SnapTrack was this close to complete disaster. SnapTrack, we, we figured out a way to embed GPS receivers into cell phones. Now, that's a feature that we all take for granted today, but back in 1995, when Dr. Norman Krasner and I started SnapTrack, uh, that was considered an impossibility. Laws of physics wouldn't permit it, was the conventional wisdom. Why? Well, because the U.S. military, uh, the developers of the GPS system, they designed the system to be used outdoors where you have a GPS receiver that has a clear view of the sky so that it can process and read these very, very weak GPS satellite signals. So a GPS receiver on the head of a cruise missile or an airplane or a ship, yes. A GPS receiver inside of a noisy cell phone that's operating in a room like this, no way. Well, at, at SnapTrack, we worked on it and figured out a way to process extremely weak GPS satellite signals even in rooms like this. Uh, and the, the challenge was to get the venture community to believe that we actually had a real invention here. So I marched off to Sand Hill Road in Menlo Park where most of the VCs are located and I expected to get a pretty a grand reception. <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, it was pretty tough. Uh, one VC accused me of pitching Voodoo physics. Uh, another literally laughed me out of his office. They all said the same thing. Come back when you have some proof uh, that the thing actually works from a trusted third party. So my team came up with this idea, well, okay, let's get the US military to test the technology. There's bound to be some great uh, soldier tracking applications, and it's their system after all. So the next day, I called the Pentagon. And I talked to the main switchboard there, and I asked, can I speak to the person in the Pentagon who's in charge of soldier tracking? I got passed around, bounced around for a while. I finally end up with this Marine uh, colonel in the bowels of the E-ring someplace in the Pentagon. Uh, and he, lo and behold, was in charge of urban warfare technology. I was excited. I got to the right person. I introduced myself. Colonel, my name is Steve Poisner. I'm involved in the Silicon Valley startup. Uh, we think we figured out a way to make GPS receivers work inside buildings. We think there's a ton of applications in the military. Can we fly out to Washington, D.C. and talk to you about it? Silence. Complete silence. Finally, the colonel says to me, and I'll never forget this, in this very slow cadence, he says, I do not need the help of a bunch of snot-nosed kids from Silicon Valley. <laughs> I was pretty stunned. Finally, I just blurted out, Carl, I challenge you to a duel. Let's test the, the latest and greatest military tracking technology side by side with the SnapTrack system, see which one works the best. Um, more silence. <laughs> Finally, the, the colonel says, you're on. Three weeks later, the colonel shows up at Pier 39 in San Francisco for nothing less than a showdown. He has with him this RV 
that's been customized, all these workstations inside. One of the computer monitors has this detailed street map of San Francisco on it with these two blinking dots on it. A green dot representing the location of the marine technology and a red dot look representing the location of the snack track system. And he had plotted out this course throughout San Francisco, in and out of the urban canyons and inside and outside of buildings, a very difficult environment for location technology. Now, representing the U.S. Marine Corps in this test was this 20-year-old Marine corporal who, well, he must have been like six foot six. And he was, he was big, and he was muscular. He was in great shape, as you'd expect. And strapped to his back was this backpack stuffed with electronic gear with this big whip antenna coming out the top. <laughs> now, representing Team SnapTrack, was, well, to protect the innocent this evening, let's just say his name was Howie. And he was one of our very best engineers. And Howie was 40 years old. And the last time Howie had exercised was, <laughs> well, in high school. Now, Howie had our technology, the latest prototype version of our technology, stuffed inside of a cigarette box, a Marlboro box, which he had in his, his shirt pocket. That was pretty cool. The two of them leave the RV, out they go. The colonel and I huddle over the computer monitor with the blinking dots. For the first few minutes, everything's working great. Uh, the red dot and the green dot moving down the streets of San Francisco neck and neck. But then all of a sudden, the green dot, the marine, pulls way out in front. The red dot's slowing down. And finally, the red dot comes to a grinding halt. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what's going on. The colonel, at this point, he has this big, gigantic grin on his face. He's pointing at me, and he's saying, Poisoner, you have a serious problem on your hands. I start to sweat. So I pick up the cell phone. I call Howie. I say, Howie, what the heck is going on? Howie tells me that they turned uh, down this San Francisco street that had this big, huge, steep hill. Howie tells me he runs completely out of breath. <laughs> so he stops at a Starbucks for a mocha latte. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Finally, the caffeine kicks in. Howie gets up. He completes what he perceives to be an obstacle course. The technology, our technology, worked great. The colonel, to his credit, writes a glowing report. Back to Sand Hill Road I go with this report. This time we raise lots of venture capital. We build the company. Qualcomm acquires the company. There's over one billion SnapTrack enabled cell phones on the market today. We've saved dozens of lives in emergency situations. We're really quite proud of it. So, the moral of the story. The moral of the story, for those that are thinking of starting a company here in Silicon Valley, is this. In, in my view, every single successful Silicon Valley startup company has at least one thing in common. Every single one. And that's their ability to attract and retain these great teams of engineers and business development people and HR and finance executives, and these people fuse together into these agile decision-making bodies uh, that are very nimble, that have the ability to make ongoing mid-course corrections as market data comes in. Now, if I've done anything that's been successful in Silicon Valley in the last 35 years, it's been my good fortune of to be able to have put together some amazing teams of people that know how to adapt very quickly. I'd like to thank those people right now. The folks at Strategic Mapping, my first company, the SnapTrack Qualcomm team, and now my, my new venture, Empowered University, where, as you heard, we are working with professors all over the country to incorporate mobile technology into the classroom and into, into the curriculum. I'd also like to thank the entrepreneurs that I've worked with in the public sector. Believe it or not, there are some entrepreneurs in the public sector. I'd also like to thank my, my family and friends, my in-laws that have been so supportive, my 22-year-old daughter, Rebecca, who knows how to keep me in line. And last but not least, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Carol, who's put up with all of my adventures over the last 30 years. 
So uh, Silicon Valley Engineering Council. So to the Silicon Valley Engineering Council, thank you very much. You're an awesome organization. I'm deeply honored by this recognition this evening. Thank you. Just a friendly reminder to all of you, anybody can be a nominator. And I'm sure there's many, many more people like the three that we recognize tonight that deserve consideration. So you, too, can be a nominator of somebody who has done a great job for the industry and for this area here and for our country. Thank you all very much.